Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. I took these pictures 17 years ago. The one on the left is in my garden in Berkhamsted. The one on the right was taken in Regent's Park in central London. It was quite an unusual weather event to say the least. Accumulating snow of several centimetres here in the Chilterns in October. I've never seen anything like that before and I've not seen anything like it since. But can we expect an early taste of winter as we head through the next two weeks? Let's see. Now, here is the picture at 18 GMT on Tuesday the 28th. We've got low pressure centre to the northwest and an Atlantic flow moving over the United Kingdom. And as I run the sequence, that really sets the theme for things in the coming days. A deep area of low pressure flow approaches. It brings strong winds and heavy outbreaks of rain to all parts of the UK. It may not be a very pleasant Halloween. And then as we head into the weekend, the unsettled theme continues. The isobar is still quite closely packed together and the risk of showers or longer spells of rain continues. And with that said, there isn't really a great deal of change taking place in the early part of next week. If anything, the flow is going to more of a southwesterly, so it's going to be quite mild, but it's staying unsettled. Here is the jet stream and upper air temperature sequence for UK inside the red circle covered by the mottled shaded area, which is the track of a jet and running this through to its conclusion. You see the blues mostly staying to the north UK, that's the cold air with areas of low pressure and the jet stream often close by. So it's unsettled, but the day to day details will of course be varying. So let's take a look at some of those possibilities. This is the picture on Wednesday, temperatures in the south, 12 to 14 degrees, a few degrees lower as we head into Northern Ireland, Northern England and Scotland. Also, there is some rain in southern and central counties, which is slowly clearing away. Brighter conditions to the north with showers in places, but in the south, it could be quite a miserable old day. Forwards to Thursday, not a great deal is changing in terms of temperatures. A little bit chilly still at this point in the north, but it's wet. We've got outbreaks of rain moving northwards and eastwards across all areas. The heaviest ones are likely to be in the north and the west, and that's often going to be the case. Forwards to Halloween. Temperatures have climbed a little bit in southern, central and eastern areas, now up to about 15 or maybe 16 degrees. Even in the north, it's quite a mild picture by at this point. But there are some showery spells of rain moving across the UK, and they could well be heavy for a time there in the south. It does look like there is a potential for some downpours for a while. Into the weekend, further spells of rain, heavy once more, moving up across southern and central parts of the UK. In the north, it is cooler still. At this point, it, temperatures have dipped once more. In the south, temperatures down a little, but fairly close to the average. Though, in the strong winds, which are likely, and the rain, it's not going to feel at all pleasant. Moving forwards to Sunday and Monday, unsettled. Further showers or longer spells of rain in all areas. Now, the nighttime lows will be fluctuating. The chart on the left shows the minimums on Thursday morning and the one on the right, Friday morning, and they are quite a contrast, and that just illustrates really the theme for the first week. So, this is probably about as low as you can expect temperatures to be down to about three, four or five degrees in the south, a little bit below freezing in the Scottish glens and chilly generally in the north. But then on Friday, not dropping below double figure. So a very mild. So it just paints that unsettled theme as we go through the coming days. But I think more concerning than temperatures, or at least more significance will be the strength of the winds. The chart on the left, Thursday evening, the one on the right, Friday morning, both from the UKV model. The strongest winds are shown in the west of Britain, the Irish Sea, where gusts of between 50 and 70 miles an hour are possible. But even in central and eastern areas, it's going to be a blustery picture, although I don't think the winds are going to be causing too many problems in mainland Britain. It is the coastal counties and the Irish Sea where it does look as though they could be problematic. And those with the UK V charts, these are the comparable ones from the European model. Once more, the strongest winds are in the west and the northwest. Although on Friday, it's a more benign picture 
according to the European model than was being shown by the UKV model. So the general theme though is fairly consistent. And the Morgue Reps 3 ensemble plot shown Wingus for London illustrates things quite nicely. So it's this period really through the 30th to maybe the 1st or the 2nd of November when there is that possibility of it being uh, windy. Uh, well, it certainly will be windy. It's just whether we get anything of note. Just one or two runs in the ensemble there going up to about 50 or 60 miles an hour. So it's not entirely out of the question, but it does look as though winds are going to be close to 30 or 40 miles an hour, at least in the southeast. The picture in Norwich, quite similar, although there are a few more runs going up to 50 or even, a even up to 60 there around the first to the 2nd of November, so it's that second uh, second pulse of strong winds, the first one there on Halloween, only around f uh, 30 miles an hour. And then up to Carlisle, once more, a few runs are going up to 50 or a little bit above it, but all in all, it does look as though, although we are going to have a period of windy or even very windy weather at this stage, I wouldn't expect it to be causing too many problems away from western and northwestern coastal counties and in the Irish Sea. Rainfall with the unsettled picture, all parts of the UK can expect rain at times, but with the weather coming in from the Atlantic, the wettest conditions will tend to be in the west and the north, and that's what these charts both show, five-day accumulations based on the ECM and GFS models. The green shading in the north and west is where the highest totals are, between 40 to 90 millimetres. In those areas, it's generally not as wet as you head into central and eastern parts of England. Moving forwards to the 10-day accumulations, the general pattern here is very, very similar. But now, instead of greens, we've got yellows and oranges and reds as the uh, totals have continued building up to about 150 to 200 millimetres in western Scotland, northwestern England seeing over 100 millimetres as well, and western parts of Wales, Northern Ireland. But in central and eastern counties, totals around 30 to 50 or 60 millimetres. So significant amounts of rain in all areas, but the wettest conditions remaining in the north and the west. With, with these totals, it wouldn't be surprising if there was some localised flooding developing. But of course the northwest is the part of the UK which does tend to get the most rain. So it's, it's not always as impactful there as it would be in the densely populated parts of central and eastern Britain. So in more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare with each other as we head towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS on Tuesday the 4th of November, a southwesterly flow, and you can see some orange shading beginning to appear, indicating mild air aloft. The Canadian model, a similar story, low pressure centre to the northwest. The German icon, once more the same sort of thing. The ECM model, very, very similar perhaps a more vigorous southwesterly flow, milder air moving up across the UK. The artificial intelligence version of the ECM model is consistent. Finally, the UK Met Office Global, some orange shading in the mix there. It's a relatively mild southwesterly flow. Good agreement, actually, between the deterministic models that we're going to be in a period of changeable and settled weather. Now, with winds coming from the southwest, or the west rather than as we've seen at times recently from the north or the northwest, you could expect temperatures to be close to or above the average. So as it's looking into November, we can start talking about mild, I guess, rather than warm. Will that mild theme continue as we go through the second week? Well, at this range, it's just about the trends and the probabilities using the ensemble data, the 16 day GEFS graph here is for London and upper air temperatures on the top half are often close to or above the average. The long term average is shown by the thick black line. There is a fair spread, so they will be fluctuating. We'll get cooler pulses of air coming through at times, but on the whole, it does look like rather a mild picture. Along the bottom is the rainfall uh, forecast. Each spike here represents the 
forecast of rain at that given time from one of the runs within the ensemble. So the more spikes, the greater the chance of rain, and the bigger they are, the greater the chance of heavy outbreaks of rain. The message here is that it's a wet picture, but towards the end there, the risk of rain is perhaps decreasing just to the very end for a few spikes showing up and they are smaller. And the artificial intelligence version of the European Ensemble model is quite similar to the GEFS. The number of rain spikes is significant early on, especially just towards the end. There could be a weak signal there for it to start turning dry, for the chance of dry periods to start increasing is probably a better way of uh, phrasing it. Temperatures down at the ground level for London. Lots of yellow in these columns for the days, 11 to 15. Towards the end there, more light green is, is showing up. Those runs going for between 6 and 10. The nighttime lows, quite a lot of light green between 6 and 10 through the night. So all in all, as I've been saying, it's quite a mild picture. Up to Manchester and the anomaly here is a little bit not as, as notable as it was on the London chart. The thick purple line, the ensemble mean, is staying close to the thick black line, the long-term average. Nonetheless, it does look quite mild, and it certainly looks wet. Lots of rain spikes showing up there throughout the second week. Two metre temperatures for Manchester. Perhaps something of a downwards trend here through the days later on, but rather a mild scene as well, quite similar to the uh, London uh, data table. Up to uh, Glasgow, fluctuating around the average, upper air temperatures, not a big anomaly showing up there, but it is a very wet picture, lots of rain spikes and some quite big ones there, and they continue to appear through the second week. The two metre temperatures for Glasgow, there isn't a clear trend here, six to ten through the days, the nighttime lows, 6 to 10 or 1 to 5, maybe towards the very end, the chance of frost does start to increase a little bit, perhaps quieter conditions maybe starting to become more likely even this far north. Rainfall in a more general terms using the ECM ensemble charts, they show the percentage chance of 5 millimetres or more of rainfall on the first three days of the second week, and it's a pretty high chance especially in the west view. You can see that red shading suggests between 70 to 90 percent. Moving forwards to the next three days, the ensemble spread is probably increasing now, so the signal becomes a little bit weaker, but the profile remains the same. The wettest conditions in the west of the United Kingdom and a significant chance of five or more millimetres of rain falling in those areas on any of these three days. Maybe towards the end there, the chance of drier periods is starting to increase. And I think that message is reinforced by the GEFS mean surface level pressure data table for York, because for once in this set of data, there is a clear trend and it is for pressure to be rising towards the end of and beyond the second week. The amount of yellow in these columns grows, and those are runs going for between 1,011 and 1,025 millibars. There's also a little bit of the orange, a few runs towards the end, taking us back to the 1,026 to 1,040 millibar range. So strongly high pressure dominated. Definitely, therefore, something to keep an eye on. The possibility of drier periods, higher pressure periods starts to increase towards the end of the second week. But You'd want to see this trend repeated in subsequent updates for several days before being confident about it actually happening. Here's the GEFS mean surface level pressure plot for Friday the 7th of November, so it's a snapshot. Really textbook stuff here. Low pressure to the northwest, high pressure to the south, a flat southwesterly flow, a westerly flow moving across the United Kingdom changeable and mild, relatively mild. The ECM has low pressure centred to the northwest as well, maybe a little bit more amplification there, but all in all it's broadly speaking very, very similar. Changeable or unsettled, relatively mild, so outbreaks of rain moving in from the west or the southwest at times, and the potential for strong winds. 
So to summarise, week one is going to be unsettled with the wettest conditions in the north and the west. Very windy, particularly in the west and the northwest on Thursday and Friday. Temperatures fluctuate, but often quite mild, especially in the south. Week two, unsettled with wet and windy spells, but towards the end, the chance of dry periods may be increasing. Temperatures more often above the average than below it. So, uh, there we have it. I think in a word, the message is unsettled and if you want to expand on that, fairly mild with the wettest conditions, the windiest conditions, mostly but not always in the north and the west. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And as ever, if you did, please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already, because in that way you'll not be missing any of my future updates. Of course, stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks so much now. Bye.